That's fine. There's no taxable they, event it, because there was no sale. And the same capital gains rules apply? Mm -hmm. After two years, two hundred fifty or five hundred. Yeah, and any time that you own a property for more than one year, you're paying long-term capital gains tax if you sell it. Um, but yes, what you're referring to is the primary residence exemption. So if you if you live in your house for two years out of the last five-year period, any two years out of the last five years, the government gives you a tax exemption, basically free money. They say that if you're single, you get a $250,000 tax exemption. If you're married, you get a $500,000 capital gains tax exemption. Yeah. That's awesome. Let's say that you went to your renter, which is right now $4,000 a month. Mm -hmm. And then after 10 years, you sell the property. Mm -hmm. So by that time, it's going to be $800,000. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be taxed in the amount when they move in or the full amount when they move out if they are in the two years extension already. Yeah, they're going to get taxed on the entire gain that they made while they while they own the property. Yeah, and, and, and so here's, and I'm going to go through the tax rates here in just a second just to kind of show you how much tax you could end up paying. I mean, in California, it's ridiculous. I mean, we, we live in the state with the highest ordinary income tax mm -hmm. of any state in the country. Uh, in fact, a few years ago, Hawaii had the audacity to raise their rate to a rate that was higher than ours. And, we couldn't let that happen, now, could we? So we came back over the top and raised it to the highest rate in the country. Um, so, so I'll go through the tax rates here in just a second. One of the other things that I wanted to point out about like-kind properties, every now and then your clients call me and they say, hey, look, I'm sick of traditional real estate. Uh, I'm not particularly interested in owning single-family homes anymore, duplexes or office buildings. And they say, is there anything kind of outside of the box that I could invest in that is considered real estate from the IRS's perspective? There's actually kind of a, a slew of strange things that you probably wouldn't normally think of that are considered real property. Um, things like cell towers. I'm sure everybody in this room probably has a cell phone. You know those god-awful things that are on the side of the highway that they try to make them look, look like, a like a tree, but they never really look like a tree? Um, if you have a client that sells a duplex and they decide that they want to invest in cell towers, they could actually do that. It's considered real estate from the IRS's perspective. Uh, billboards. A lot of times our clients, they have a little bit of money left over at the end of their exchange, don't know what to do with it. You know, I sold for a million, I only bought for 900, don't know what to do with the other 100 grand. Go out and buy yourself some billboards if you want to. That's perfectly fine. Uh, windmills. You guys ever driven out to Palm Springs? Yeah. See that huge windmill farm that's out there in the middle of nowhere? Every single one of those windmills has its own APN number. If you're really into wind energy, you can go out and buy yourself a windmill if you wanted to. Wow. Uh, also, air rights, I'm just going to write air. Air rights, water rights, uh, oil, gas, and mineral leases. I'm just going to put OGM, oil, gas, mineral rights. In California, boat docks qualify for 1031s and moorings. Okay. I didn't even know what the hell a mooring was until I had a client that called me up and said he wanted to sell his mooring off of Catalina Island and do a 1031 exchange. I said, well, what the heck is that? He says, you know that little stick that's in the water you attach your boat to to make sure it doesn't go floating off to sea? Oh, my um, God. So, yeah, is that worth something? Sold it for $250,000. Oh, and exchanged it, yeah, that little stick in the water. So if you want to sell your stick for $250,000 and go buy yourself a condo, by all means, you are welcome to do so. And if you're a real morbid SOV, and I've had one client in my 15-year career do this, you can actually buy and sell cemetery plots as well. So I had a client that was actually in Palm Springs. He was a member of the Masons, the Freemasons, right? And he wanted the Brotherhood to all be in the same section of the same Palm Springs Cemetery when they all started to die off. So he sold his rental property for 500 grand and went out and bought 250 cemetery plots at a Palm Springs Cemetery. Now my sick joke is that once the body is in the ground, it's now owner occupied and you're not going to be able to. Uh, but the reason I'm pointing these things out is just to kind of illustrate the diversity. So the water rights, you know, in in, in Upland, in oh, San Antonio yes, Heights, there are uh, properties yep. that are sold with the uh, water rights. Yeah. So those properties will be eligible for 1031s, yeah. even if. Absolutely. Oh. Yeah, so I, I'll give you an example of water rights. I thought this was kind of a unique one. I had a guy who calls me up. This guy was 88 years old, all right? And this was probably six or seven years ago. Calls me up, he says, I own a piece of land. It looked exactly like this, right? He owns a piece of dirt out in the Mojave Desert. This guy owned one square mile of the Mojave Desert. 
Okay, um, he was a former alfalfa farmer, but he hadn't you know you tilled this field for probably the last 20 years. He's long been retired. He says, Steve, I want to sell my alfalfa farm. Um, and I said, okay, well, what the hell does one square mile go for these days, right? He says, well, I'm selling the land for $8 million. Okay, so one square mile of the Mojave Desert apparently goes for about $8 million. Bucks. I said, okay, that's great. What do you want to go out and buy? He said, I want to buy everything. I said, well, what do you mean you want to buy everything? He said, I want some office buildings. I want some retail shopping centers. I want to buy a mall. I want to buy apartments. I want to go buy a house in Martha's Vineyard for the kids to have. And the, I said, okay, hold your horses. You want $8 million, it's a lot of money, but it's not going to buy you everything. And he says, well, wait a second. So I hired a guy from UC Davis to come down, taps into my property, and finds out that I have tremendous water rights. I have an aquifer underneath my property. And all of the surrounding farmers, they want to tap into the water underneath my property and use it for, you know, to, to grow their farmland. And he said, so I'm selling the actual piece of land for $8 million. I'm selling the water rights for $90 million. <laughs> so he did go out and buy everything. Uh, so, but, but that's just illustrating. I mean, there's all sorts of strange things that you can possibly do exchanges with. I had a, another client. This was kind of a, a, a fun one. I have this lady that calls me up a few years back, and she owned an old tenement building in Manhattan, in New York. So she calls me up. And she says, Steve, I own this old building. You know, it's, it's an old tenement building. It's been in my family. It's been in the family for 120 years. And she says, the guy next door to me wants my property, right? Because he just developed this huge apartment building right next door. It's probably Trump, right? It's in, it's in Manhattan. Who knows? I don't know who the, the actual guy next door is. But she says, he wants to buy my property, but I told him to stick it. I'm not selling the property. It's been in the family forever. It's been passed down generation after generation. I'm not going to sell it. So I kind of like politely asked her, I said, well, then why are you calling me? If you're not selling your property, you're not doing a 1031 exchange, what do you need from me? And she says, well, the reason that he wants my property is not really because he wants the real estate. It's because he wants to make sure that I never build up and obstruct the views that he just created of you know, Central Park or whatever on the top floors of his brand new apartment building. So he came to me with an offer to buy the air above my building to make sure that I never build up and obstruct the views. Any guesses as to how much she sold her air next to this building for? Two million. Fifty million dollars. Yes. Sold her air yes. for fifty million dollars. So, you know, it just illustrates the strange, unique things you could possibly long. probably not going to run into an air rights deal in your career, but, but you never know. <laughs> Every now and then I have somebody say, I hate the neighbor behind me. Can I just build up and piss them off? No, you cannot. Or can I buy the air above their house? So that, you know, they're usually the CCNRs or, or whatnot of the, the neighborhood don't allow for that. But you do find air rights in you know, major metropolitan, particularly downtowns. You know, downtown LA, downtown New York, you know, Manhattan. Uh, Atlanta, et cetera. So, um, any questions, concerns? Okay. That was a good question he had. How long do they own the air? It's, it's in perpetuity. I mean, so okay. the, you're going to buy it. He's going, now, now, the problem that you're going to so have is some grandkid time. down the road is going to want to sell the property. And when that buyer comes in to buy the property, they're going to realize that they don't have, they don't own the right to build up. Um, so the, the but doesn't, doesn't that get void once the new buyer buys it? No, no, no. 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 So the, 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 realistically, the best buyer for that property is the guy next door, the guy that already owns right. the air rights, so that then he can, you know, eventually scrap the tenement building and, and eventually develop it himself. Um, but that's it could be a problem because you don't own the air above your your building. Anybody that comes in and buys that thing is going to want to, to raise it, you know, to trash what's there and build from the ground up. So. So no easement law. Easements do qualify for exchanges as long as it's a perpetual easement. So if it's a perpetual easement, it will qualify for an exchange. Like a cell tower is considered a perpetual easement. Um, oil, gas, and mineral rights are considered perpetual easements. So um, easements do in fact qualify as real property from a tax perspective. Refresh my memory. What is a perpetual uh, easement? Like, like a whatever. Like an access road running through a property would be would be an easement or yeah, yeah nobody's yeah. an easement but the term perpetual 
Forever. 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 You know, in perpetuity. It doesn't yeah. end. It doesn't end. It doesn't end. It doesn't end. Or there's no written end in sight. I mean, like if the cell tower was a you know a lease for only five years, then that would not qualify as a perpetual lease. But if for the foreseeable future the cell tower is going to be in, in place, then it's considered a perpetual lease. What would be the benefit of only the cell tower? They actually cash for a pretty damn well. Yeah. Probably better than your traditional single family. Yeah, I mean, you, I actually do have quite a few investors that are buying cell towers because, I mean, think about it. All of you guys have cell phones, right? I mean, anybody in this room not have a cell phone? I mean, there's 350 million.